All right, looks like we're live here. All right, good, good, good. All right, Kim, K Paso, what's going on? Download stuff, talk about tonight. I've been out of the loop for six. All right. Kim's in a good place because she's been uh she has been paying attention to the news for uh for six weeks. That's good. Um uh sadly, Kim, I think we're gonna have uh some stuff to talk about here that uh that's uh concerning. Um and you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to make of it, but uh all right, there we go. So I'm looking at Rumble. Yo, 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 ma. All right, there we go. So we are on Rumble, it looks like, and we are on YouTube, it looks like. All right. Um, <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk about first thing we're going to talk about is when genius failed, the rise and fall of long-term capital management. All right. So if you're not familiar with LTCM, they basically almost destroyed the capital markets in 1990. They had all the Nobel Prize winners in economics. All just it's such a great, it's an easy book to read. Lowenstein's uh, When Genius Failed, it's a freaking awesome book. And uh, it just kind of got swept on the rug because 1998, the market's actually did fine. It didn't seem to be that fine uh, initially. So I'm just going to share with you a brief of the fall of long term capital management. Mullins felt the firm had done a good job of heading off trouble in 1997. We anticipated Asia, or we had a strategy for it. But the professors had overlooked the larger truism of Asia. In times of trouble, markets become more closely linked. This is from the book now, not from me. Huh. Where did I get that? When things go to hell in a handbasket, everything is correlated except for government bonds. In times of trouble, Markets become more closely linked and seemingly unrelated assets rise and fall in tandem. They barely noticed a seemingly remote news items that moved over the wires just before Christmas. Standard and Poor's, the rating agency, had downgraded Russia's debt. Downgraded Russia's debt. Putin is now saying that you have to make your payments to your foreign creditors in what? What do you think? In rubles. What is that reminiscent to you of, my friends? Why do you think there is hyperinflation in Germany in the Weimar Republic? Because they're making their payments to their creditors because the insanity of their Versailles Treaty in whatever, Deutschmarks, I don't even know what it was back then. Whatever it was, whatever the currency of Germany was. And what did that do? Well, it led to the rise of Hitler, and then it led to World War II. I, I, I don't think people realize the extent of the chaos that is coming here. I, I really don't. And I might be wrong, 100%, but I'm just sitting there thinking, LTCM, long-term capital management, almost took down the capital markets because of Russian default. All right. We know that. That's a fact. We also know that guess who's banking on Russia to default is George Soros. We also know that George Soros has taken down many currency. We also know that George Soros is on the side of the good guys, uh, which is weird because George Soros isn't a good guy. We know he's funding district attorneys in the all over the United States who are letting I mean, criminals go without bail whatsoever. And they're going around and raining destruction on other Americans. Yeah, somehow George Soros and his freaking clan of bandits are concerned about Ukraine while they're allowing American to be Americans, innocent Americans, to be freaking slaughtered in the streets in the United States. We know Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. Hold on a second. Coming in? Right. And Sniffy Joe and Hunter Biden and all these clowns and John McCain and then Lindsey Graham and Marco Rubio. Maybe he wasn't that bad back then. But he certainly is now or knee deep in the uh, the Ukrainian uh, <laughs> defense. But we also know they're knee deep in the corruption that was the Ukrainian government. We know this. This isn't debatable. We know what happened in the uh, duly elected Ukrainian president back was in 2014. We have pictures of McCain and their, their freaking corrupt president and their ambassador and freaking Lindsey Graham and with soldiers of the Ukrainian army. We also know Ukraine has tons of Nazis in there. All these things aren't really debatable. They're just not. 
We know that they impeached Trump over a Ukrainian call. Well, actually, what was happening was the, the, the corruption was going full throttle to John McCain, Lindsey McGraham, Lindsey Graham, all these people, the Clinton Foundation, just like they did to Haiti. They raped Haiti. They raped Ukraine. That's a fact. This isn't debatable. So we know that good guys have all these bad characters on the good guy side. We know that 100%, not debatable. We also have a history of when uh, Russia defaulted in 1998, where the markets almost went to a crashing halt. And you might not remember that. I had just started my career at Vanguard back then. I remember like it was yesterday. All right. So we have a couple things going on here. Part two of that, we know that when, the, uh, when we have massive concerns in the markets, everything goes to hell in a handbasket except for U.S. government bonds. All right. And we know that as much as the Fed can try to put out the freaking fire, well, they've shot a lot of their bullets already. They don't have that many bullets left. They just don't because of September 11th. Huh? What caused September 11th? That was very interesting, is it not? What caused the great war in Iraq? Oh, very interesting. Uh, trying to get rid of the petrodollar. We know this. And we know that Russia is working with the, with the, we got the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, and South Africa and other Odd countries in South Africa is my kind of meaningless, but the BRICS, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, and China are working together to create a secondary currency to compete with the United States. We know that Jerome Powell, and if you're not listening to uh, the No Agenda show with Adam Curry and John C. Dvorak, I highly suggest you do. We know that Jerome Powell is saying, yeah, we, you know, we don't really know what to do if there's a second currency. We still think we're the main currency in the world, but you know, we, we've survived two currencies before. <laughs> I, this isn't good. All right, so I want to share with you some things here. So we know the bad guys are on our side. That's a fact. There are bad guys on that side too. But don't give me this. It's us or them, or you must be a Putin stooge if you don't recognize the freaking the, the two by four in your own eye. Because we have a huge two by four in our own eye, which is the corruption we've had towards Ukraine since freaking. I mean, hell, since I don't even know what, how far it goes back. Uh, and the corruption we had in, in, in Russia when uh, Yeltsin was corrupt as all can be, run by the free marketeers of the United States as well, corrupt as all can be. We've done bad things to, to innocent people, for sure. And the, the bad people got, got rich off this. I mean, it's no joke that the Ukrainian uh, government was one of the biggest providers, donor, donors to the Clinton Foundation. Why could that possibly be? Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I tell you, if you're not familiar with the story of Haiti, uh, why do you think Mark Warner is so rich? Just look at Haiti. It's freaking disgusting, man. Terry McAuliffe, Mark Warner, Clinton, the whole thing. And I can't remember the name of the uh, the long the uh, phone line, the phone company that was down in Haiti back in the um, early to mid '90s. And Aristide, if memory serves, was it Aristide? It's freaking disgusting, disgusting. And Haiti is actually Clinton went down there, raped the whole damn country. And Mark Warner sitting on the Senate, uh, him and his buddy Lindsey Graham and Marco Rudu calling for war. In freaking a NATO war, not a U.S. war, of course. They're calling for a freaking where they want us to send planes to Poland so Poland can use their planes to fight Russia and establish a no fly zone. Putin isn't stupid. He said, Well, if you're sending planes to Poland that is going to be used against us, inherently you're declaring war on Russia. All right, so I want to just share with you a couple articles. Um, this is uh, this is bad, and so let's uh, let's go into here. So I want to share a couple of things here. And I just think a lot of people say, oh, you must be a global stooge. This is funny right here. I mean, a Putin stooge. Shell, right here. So on Saturday, about a day after the details of the Shell purchase first emerged, and I'll talk about this here in a second, and following the anticipated barrage of criticism for how daring they buy Russian oil. All right, you can make up your mind, dog. There you go. There you go, pumpkin. Europe's largest oil company pushed back, saying, without an uninterrupted supply of crude to refineries, the energy industry cannot assure provision of essential products to people across Europe over the weeks ahead. Are you hearing this, you freaking anti-oil uh, fools? And look, I would love to be anti-oil. As much as I've learned about the Rockefeller Foundation, I realize how evil these clowns are. But we are. We are. We don't have enough nuclear. We're not even at the beginning. At the, be the nuclear, you can't just turn on a freaking switch and all of a sudden we have all this nuclear energy. We need oil. That's just a fact. Without an, un without an uninterrupted supply of crude oil to refineries, the energy industry cannot assure continued provision of essential products to people across Europe over the weeks ahead. Which, of course, as Zero Hedge says, is precisely. Putin's gambit. 
And more importantly, adding that Shell has been in intense talks with governments and continue to follow their guidance around the security and supply, even as acu acutely aware to navigate this limo with utmost care. So I want to show you guys something. Oh, look at that. Crude, look at that. Down to 2850. All right. When it was <laughs> on Friday, with the Russian crude discount hitting a record 2850 below Brent. All right, so we got basically the, the better quality oil, is my understanding, Brent. And then you got the Urals, the Urals, I don't know how you pronounce it. That's the Russian oil. But given that Russia oil is so cheap and given that our oil is so high, Shell purchased the Russian black gold from oil merchant Traf Trafigura Group, which had originally bought the cargo from Russia. Discussing the transaction, the deal not only underscores a deep discount Russia is going to have to sell its oil at, but more importantly, it's also the first clear reminder that there is a clearing price for everything and that Russia will still find willing buyers and companies that are reliant on the crude from Russia if the discount is low enough. Yep, 100%. And we all said that now that Shell has shown the rest of the world that can be done, we expect most, if not all, Western companies to scramble and bid for Russian oil, considering when the regular price for Brent is trading at 115 on its way to 200 and with a Russian discount to spot slowly but we will surely drift back to zero. So basically you can buy all the Brent you want all over the world, but you're paying at some point you'll be paying 200 bucks a barrel or you can buy Russian at a significant discount. What are you going to do? Because we also know that you need oil. We know that. I want to show you something else. This is pretty interesting. And let's see if I can't find it because this is, uh, uh, let's see, this was freaking nuts. And the point being is, oh, we should have made her, Putin where it hurts, you freaking fools, man. I got no I got no patience for people who are this dumb. I just don't. You should hit where it hurts. They don't know what the hell to talk about. So we're going to go to, uh, hold on a second, my man Schellenberger. He had written a, oh, man, can I not get it here? Hold on a second. Yeah, right there. See if I can't find my man. Yeah, I like Substack. If you guys aren't on Substack, you should be. I like locals and I like Substack. You should be on both. So we're going to go to Substack Reader. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find this on the fly here. Uh, let's see. And we're going to go to let the apology. I like her. Caitlin, Ukraine is a sacrificial pawn on the imperial chessboard, 100%. Let's see if we can't find my man. It is Alex Epstein, Schellenberger. I thought I got it right here. All right, cool. All right, good, good, good. So let's hold on just a second, and we're going to. You're, when I show you what I'm going to show you here, if I can find it, you're going to be freaking stunned. Stunned. All right. Let's see if I can't find it. Share screen right there. All right. Why progressives don't care for Black Lives Matter. San Francisco. Oh, right here. The West Green Energy Delusions Empowered Putin. I want to show you if he's got that graph on here. Oh, man. Let's see. Does he got the graph on here? Ah, no. He doesn't have the graph. Uh, uh, at the turn of the millennium, uh, Germany's electricity was around 30% nuclear, but Germany has been sacking its reliable, inexpensive nuclear plants. Uh <laughs> Greta Thunberg called them extremely dangerous, expensive, and time-consuming, even though the IPCC deeming it necessary in every major scientific review deeming nuclear the safest way to make reliable power. By 2020, Germany had reduced its nuclear share to 11%. Then the last day of 2021, it shut down half of its remaining six nuclear reactors. The other sl three are slated for shutdown at the end of this year. Compare this to next door France, which fulfills 70% of electricity needs with carbon-free nuclear plants. Germany has also spent lavishly on weather-dependent renewables to the tune of $36 billion a year, maybe solar panels, mainly solar panels and industrial wind turbines. But we all know their problems as nuts. Hey, never mind slave labor and concentration camps in China. But again, if it's white people who are, if it's not white people being supposedly in the harm's way, no one cares. So China, yeah, we'll still do the Olympics over there. Yeah, but we're going to go after Ukraine or Russia because Ukraine, because they're white people being slaughtered. When we're going to defend the Nazis of Ukraine, it's crazy. All right. Uh, let's see. Germany has trapped itself. Uh, let's see. Because it gets over half as, a third of its energy from Russia. It could burn more coal and undermine its commitment to reducing carbon emissions, or it could use more natural gas. 
Uh, but at the cost of dependence on imported Russia gas. Berlin was faced with a choice between unleashing the wrath of Putin on neighboring countries or inviting the wrath of Thunberg. They chose Putin. Because of these policy choices, Putin could turn off the gas flows of Germany anytime he wants. Yep. This is why Germany successfully begged the Biden, the Sniffy Joe administration, not to oppose a contentious new gas pipeline from Russia called the Nord Stream 2, which is now gone. They, they didn't improve that. It's gone. This cut against the priorities of the green mining governments. All right. But I want to, um, we should take Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a wake up call. But there was another thing he had in here. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find it. He, he's on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. So he had this, he showed this chart of, of uh, Germany and they used to export uh, like a, a huge amount of, of gas or something like that. And now they're importing. I'm not going to find it. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's too bad. I was hoping I could find that, but I'm not going to be able to. Oh man, I wish I still had that. Uh, that's how Russia ends up supplying 20% of Europe's oil, 40% of its gas, and 20% of its coal. Yep, 100%. And uh, and so we are idiotic that we don't see this, and yet we're going to say, well, if you do, uh, stop supporting Putin. Stop supporting Putin. Oh, but how there, guy? All right, so let's keep going because I want to show you something else here too because uh, this is fun. Uh, just while we're having fun, let's have some more fun, shall we? Because I, I got a kick out of this. We're just dealing with idiots. There's no other. I mean, I hate to say it, but this is nuts. Um, the Biden administration has a team in Venezuela as U.S. seeks to break country from Russia influence. So basically, we're going out to Venezuela to ask them to give us oil. Uh, you can't make this crap up, man. You can't make this crap up. Um, it's freaking, it's insanity run amok. And yet, again, I must be a pro-Putin because I recognize how idiotic this whole thing is. Uh, seemed like I had something else I wanted to talk about on the. Uh, all right, let me go back to Zero Hedge because they had another great article here too. Uh, I just, I mean, I just, my mind is is nuts. All right, so hold on just a second. Do people not remember World War One? How bad it was? World War Two? Uh, there's something right here. Elon Musk calls for Europe to restart new plants. You can't just turn. You can't just say let's just restart it, man. The U.S. to boost oil and gas output immediately. Um, Beware the false flags. Yep, 100%. We assume the purpose of Rubio's comments are yeah, right here. Rubio is freaking. This is where the Republican Party can kiss my butt, too. The Republican Party is not as bad as the Democrats, but they're bad. Um, I'm not voting for these guys. I just, I'm sick of them. Uh, so we are, we had the Lindsey Graham talk about assassinating Putin. Then he said, well, wouldn't you have assassinated Hitler? It's freaking insane. And then Marco Rubio, I can't emphasize enough how much Putin and his risk calculators have changed. He will push Belarus into a war, use chemical or biological weapons, slaughter millions, and impose Stalinist restrictions in Russia. All right, so the facts are Russia is winning and big time because he would not talk like that if Russia was on the defeat. So we're gonna have to get with a uh, a, we're gonna have to get with the reality that Russia is gonna win. It's not gonna be close. Uh, U.S. certainly can't get involved because if we do, it's World War III. That's all there is to it. Um, We have to contend with the fact that uh, that Germany uh, cannot they they're not self sufficient. They're at the the whim of Putin. Just have to contend with that. Or we're going to World War III. So, and here's the thing that scares me more than anything. I mean, Putin's going to win. It's not even going to be close. He's going to win going away. The Russian people support him. His approval numbers are way high. Now, you might challenge the polls. That's fine. I mean, I, ch- I challenge the polls all the time. But you go with what the numbers you got. And Putin's numbers are through the roof. Sniffy Joe's is on the, and through the, the, the floor. You might call it a rally around the flag. Don't care. But the issue is that we have to contend with the fact that Putin's winning. We are on our backs. And this might be the last breath of a, a third of us of, of the Western style uh, capitalist. And I hate to say capitalist. It's not capitalist uh, imperialism that has been happening for the last hundred years. It just might be. And here's the, uh, the icing on the cake, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, I want to share with you something here, too. This is what I want to close this with and get into what we should do. And I don't know how the answer, but I tell you, um, I want to go into the conservative treehouse here real quick. If I can share this, because yeah. uh, I this uh, this I, I find this to be the most concerning thing. And not that you concern you just, oh, my goodness, we're all going to die. But you you uh, you get concerned. And here's Poland. Fake news. Poland says we never said we'd take American planes. So idiot Blinken, secretary, the deputy secretary of state says, uh, Poland, we're going to give you planes so you can fight Russia. And the Poland says, uh, unfortunately, this is the prime minister of Poland. 
unfortunately, are spreading misinformation with quotation. Uh, Poland will not send its fighter jets to Ukraine as well as many as well as allow it to use its air force. The point, my friends, is the the, the West. It, there's no there there. They're not they're, they're, the Western people that we thought would be initially the initial three to you know two to three day craze of anti-Russian, be Russia phobic, everything anti-Russian, just like what happened after 9-11, just like what happened with the coronavirus is waning right now. Uh, and, and Poland doesn't want to be a part of this. They're like, dude, what the hell, man? You know, uh, we saw the Nazis come from the, the West. We saw the commies come from the East. The commies were actually worse than Nazis, but we don't want any of them. And we don't trust America to back us as well. They shouldn't. They shouldn't trust America to back. Them. All right. So it's a. Uh, so that was, I mean, that's good. We don't want Poland getting involved in this because they're not going to be as puppets as Ukraine is uh, with a regime that's in Washington D.C. Um, <laughs> and this is the. I quoted this earlier today. Uh, it's very challenging to filter through the propaganda from the Western media surrounding Ukraine. Uh, Fox News, Maria, whatever her name is, hosts former Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko, the formerly installed Ukrainian division operator of the U.S. State Department NATO uh, laundry operation. As president, it was his corrupt government who were supported by McCain, Graham, same, Senator Amy Klobuchar, uh, U.S. Ambassador Marie, whatever the hell her name is, and D.C. politicians who support Joe and Hunter using Ukraine for financial profit. They're all raping Ukraine, all of them. It was under this guy that Ukraine made a status as the number one donor to the Clinton Foundation. It was this corrupt influence that led to the frustrated citizens selecting current clown Zelensky with his promise of performance, which never happened. All right, so let me just show you a picture. Uh, but don't forget, uh, uh, part of these influence priorities, uh, well, I'll show this picture here real second, right quick. Uh, Right here. It was former Ukraine ambassador Bill Taylor who engaged in a care carefully planned text message with the EU ambassador to set up a narrative to help the impeachment plan and Adam Schiff's political coup effort. You are on the side of these people by supporting this, guys. You are on the side of this, of these people who, import, who impeached President Trump. Not once, but twice because of your Ukraine phone call. The, how come these guys aren't being impeached? Senators and D.C. officials from both parties participated in the Ukraine rape. Part of those influence priorities was exploiting the financial opportunities within Ukraine while simultaneously protecting the background activity of Joe Biden and his crime family. This is where McCain and Lindsey Graham were working with her, the ambassador to Ukraine. You might remember Marie Yokonovich, George Kent, and U.S. Charge of Affairs to Ukraine, Bill Taylor, the ambassador, testifying against Trump and the ridiculous impeachment efforts surrounding Ukraine. I hope you guys see, you can't be for Trump and for Ukraine, what's going the, the current version of Ukraine right now. You can't. You got to be one or the other. And I look, I'm, I hope Trump does not run in 2024, but I certainly am a hell of a lot more pro-Trump than I'm in these clowns right here. And that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with the ghost of McCain, you know, freaking light and loafers, Lindsay. You're dealing with all these guys, man. And yet you're saying, well, I don't want to, I, I'm, I'm anti-Putin. You're not anti-Putin by being pro these guys. This is the side of Soros. This is the side of Hillary Clinton. What are you doing? It's crazy to me. It was, it was uh, Bill Taylor, who was formerly U.S. ambassador to Ukraine under George W. Bush. Shocking, right? George W. Bush is anti-Trump now. And later helped the Obama administration design the laundry operation providing taxpayer financing in Ukraine in exchange for back-channel payments to U.S. politicians and their family. In 2019, Giuliani released a letter that he sent to uh, uh, Lindsey Granisty outlining how Bill Taylor blocked visas for Ukrainian whistleblowers who are willing to testify to the corrupt financial schemes. However, unfortunately, Lindsey Graham's seat, along with dozens of U.S. senators currently serving, were likely recipients for money that aforementioned laundry process. The visas never got approved. They were trying to get visas for these Ukrainians who are going to testify against a corrupt political machine that you want to support right now. As everyone is aware, U.S. Senators write foreign aid policy, rules and regulations, thereby creating the financing mechanism to transmit U.S. funds. Those same senators then receive a portion of the laundered money back through the various institutes and business connections to the forest government, uh, in this example, Ukraine, Burisma, to Biden. The U.S. State Department serves as the distribu distribution and collect collection network for the authorization of the money laundering by granting conflict, conflict waivers, approvals for financing, global initiative, Clinton, and permission slips for the payment of foreign money. 
Yep. And you can get indulgence fees, junk as gifts, Codell's or that expense payments to family members who have political overstate. It's, and there's it's just so freaking corrupt. And yet our side says, yeah, I'm for Ukraine because I hate Putin. I, I, you hate Putin more than Soros? Poor Putin isn't doing anything right now. Soros is doing stuff right now in our own country. He's allowing people to get killed, Americans. But I'm going to take Putin's side. I mean, I'm going to be on Soros' side. It's insanity. I'm not even sure if I have any people watching anymore. I still do because a lot of people don't want to hear this stuff because it makes them mad. They say, oh, you must be pro Putin. If, if, I, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to say that, but I'll say I'm hell lot. I see where the, the dangers are. And Putin is the least of my danger concern right now. We have danger right now and called George Soros, Hillary Clinton, just the north of our neighbor, Justin Trudeau, hell lot more so than we have for uh, Putin. Sunday talks, Marco Rubio makes a case for NATO war against Russia. A freaking insanity, man. Uh, I want, but I want to show you something else here right here, too, by the way. Um, uh, let's see here. V said MasterCard will announce the next. Uh, yeah, right. This is this is freaking insane. Um, Visa suspends all operations in Russia. We are one step closer to losing the dollar as a global trade currency. That's probably not a bad thing, frankly. At the end of the day, the petrodollar has created lots of. I mean, look, man. <laughs> we we uh, you st- when you see it, you can't unsee it. I, I guess you can't. You know, at the same time that we're griping about Putin, we're bombing Somalia. We're bombing Syria. You know what I'm saying? Who knows what the hell we're still doing in Afghanistan? Who knows? Who knows where else we got people? Who knows? Uh, but, you know, we're, but we're, a, some guy said, you know, and he's a normally right-wing guy. He says, well, at least we're killing terrorists before they kill us. Says, oh, yeah, like those Afghanistan terrorists we killed when we were skedaddling from Afghanistan. And the Defense Department said, we got them, we got them. And it turned out, yeah, it was like 25 kids in diapers. That's fantastic. Um, uh, right here, uh, you gotta watch anytime you can listen to this guy, Douglas McGregor. Obviously, he's a traitor, right? I'm sure uh, we'll all be charged with sedition, um, for too long. Me too. Um, anyway, so you can read that guy, but I want to say, uh, hold on just a second because here is a thing that he, uh, yeah, and is the embattled hero compared to Churchill now slams NATO for re- refusing fly zone. I'm not gonna find it, but the point being is. They're going to ban. Look, so right here, (sighs) Hungary, Argentina, Moldova, and Turkey now ban grain exports. Um, This isn't. This is no joke, man. This is. This is just from yesterday or two days ago. Now banning grain exports. Um, And yet, what we're going to do? Well, we're still going to send them because we don't care about the uh, America. We just care about the money that goes to big, big ag, big pharma. Big oil and Washington D.C. They don't give two craps. And we got we, uh, Kamal's. We got to take the pain, take the pain to deal with Putin. Um, the the and I'm not sure if I can be able to find it because he the way Sundance said it it uh, was so it just is such a. Let me see real quick. Uh, one, I got to find this one thing. How he said. Uh. It's just, uh, I'm not going to find it. Anyway, the point being is, so we put all this pressure on Putin, and he's not going to, I mean, there's no coming back from this. We can't, like, make nice after this. So what happens next? And that's my concern. What happens next, man? I mean, you can't, there's this, we've, we're going to the black abyss that you just can't wake up and say, ah, oh, forget it's all good. Putin's going to win in Ukraine. I mean, and we might have a government exile and all that. That's fine. I mean, whatever. But he's not going to take over. I mean, he could. I didn't think he'd evade, but he did because the NATO expansion. And Zelensky basically said, come get us, Putin. Putin said, okay. Rightly or wrongly. It's irrelevant. But here we are. And what happens next when Putin wins? I mean, he's going to be he's going to be brutalized. The ruble is going down. He's going to pay companies uh, their debts in rubles, which means they're not going to make any money off it. What's he going to do? What happens? It, they're not, the petrodollar is, Jerome Powell, just listen to the, the audio that uh, Adam Curry had about Powell. He said, yeah, there's going to be two currencies. Uh, we don't really know what to make of this. I, all right. Yeah. I just, I just read, that. I just showed you that. Just read that U.S. officials met with Maduro in Venezuela. All right.
So what do we do? And that's my concern. All right. So if you have four years cash, I, I frankly wouldn't do anything. I just, I mean, there's nothing you can do. I mean, I guess you can make five years cash. I don't know. And I've been thinking a lot. I said, maybe you should take, if you're normally, I don't know, if you if you normally have all stocks, maybe go to Wellington. That's what I've already done. All right. So I've always had all stocks. I went to Wellington. Maybe if you're Wellington, you go to Wellesley. Or maybe if you're in Wellington, you go 50-50 or something like that. You know, just you go back one position than you would because I still, I, you know, I didn't know this was going to happen. But you have a 13-year run of nothing but huge gains except for a, a drop of 4.4% in 2018 then a blink of an eye drop in the March of 2020. That's it. So not only on the backs of huge run-ups, but this, this, this is coming to a head. They want pain on the American people because, you know, I was listening to this lady today on the news um, and we just had in the background while I was making dinner. Um, and she's like, yeah, it's going to cost more to fly. That's what they want. And I look, I don't have a problem. I don't like, I mean, I hate going to the airport anymore. I can't stand it. If you're worried about CO2, you shouldn't be flying anyway. Um, side note, I think, did I say this in a video yesterday? I think I did. There was a guy uh, who got killed in a plane crash, and his uh, his whole business was based on carbon offset trading because he hated CO2, so he was going to offer carbon, carbon offset trading. Apparently, he made bank because he owned a plane, and then he died in a plane crash. I said, how freaking ironic is that? You know, that'd be like me dying, uh, freaking owning, uh, you know, paying uh, an investment advisor 2% fee. You know what I'm saying? Because like, yeah, I'd never do that. If I were to do that, people say, what the hell? So he, he was paying investment advisor 2% fee. Well, he told us not to. Same thing with this guy dying on the carbon offset guy while he's flying uh, private planes because they're the biggest spewers of CO2 there is. Other than boats, which go from China to here and whatnot, because unless they're driving by nuclear. Anyway, point being is I'm sitting there thinking, so what do we do, man? So, you know, I don't have four years cash. Not, not by stretch. And I have some debt. So that, my, you know, my liquidity, I, first of all, you got to get some, literally some cash out of the bank. Uh, they, I've heard interviews with Russians when they, uh, they couldn't get their money out of the ATMs. I've seen that before. You might not remember, but even during, I think it was Ur Hurricane Irma, the ATMs were broken for their electricity was out. So you couldn't get money out of the ATMs. And there's another thing happened not that long ago where you couldn't get money out of the ATMs either. So you better get cash, get some cash out. All right, that's just, I mean, look, you can call me dooms. I don't, I literally don't care. Don't care what you call me. I'm saying, well, because I'm thinking what I'm trying to do. So I'm telling my wife was make sure we got cash. You know what I'm saying? So we're getting cash. You want anything you could trade with that you don't have access to quickly that you want to have in your house, not at the bank. I mean, certainly at the bank, but mostly you, if you think about it in, in increments, you need enough money in your, in your hand to cover you for food, to cover you from, you know, to go buy some raw milk from a guy to, you know, cover you for that kind of stuff day to day for a couple of weeks. I don't expect the ATM machines to go out for more than a couple of weeks, but let's just say they did. You know what I'm saying? You want money in your hand I, and people say, but what about inflation? I could care less right now about inflation. In the long run, we're all dead right now. It's the, it's, it's the pain that we, we could be dealing with for the next six to nine months and not more. Don't forget This wasn't even a war. This was after you, uh, um, the commies fell and it looked, everything looked good in the nineties when Russia defaulted on their debts, this right here happened, almost took down the entirety of the global financial markets. Is that going to happen again? I have no clue, but if you're like me, you don't have four years of cash and you got some debt. I'd be thinking of a way to freaking protect what you've got. And what I do, I mean, so let's just say uh, for simplicity, let's just say uh, two years ago before the insanity of COVID kicked in, you're at a hundred. All right. And now you're at 155. I'm just using this for example. All right. So you're at 100. Now you're at 155. And you don't have four years cash and you don't have, you do have a little bit of debt. Why not take 55 off the table and lock it in and put it at your bank? At your bank. It can still be an IRA. You can still do a trusty to trusty transfer inside an IRA without being taxable. Now, I don't know how they do trusty to trusty transfers from a bank, from your brokerage account. I don't know. I don't know how that works because I just when I was in banking, I never had to do that. Thank goodness. Um, I know how it works from investment institutions. But if you're saying, look, I got a you know a million bucks that show up, I got five hundred thousand to show up, whatever I got. I'm up X amount of money from where I was in 2019, the end of 2019. So look up your statement. What did you have at the end of 2019? What do you have now? Take those gains off the table and put them at your bank. That's I, I just think that's probably the best solution there is because you don't want to be too. I mean, see, here's the issue. 
um, like, like my man, Eric, I'm not sure he's on here. He'd been out of the market for a, uh, for a long, long time because he's worried about who was he worried about Biden. I can't remember. Sniffy Joe. I forgot. There's, no, I think he was worried even more than that, but there was somebody who'd been out of the market for a while. He wants to get back in. He missed a huge amount of upside. That's the issue. If you think you have all the answers, well, you could easily be wrong. And so you got to hedge it. You got to hedge against two things happening at the same time. One is the markets can continue on a tear because we're the only game in town in terms of global markets. You know, Russia and China are working together, but that's that's not Western style capitalism. So they're not going to be involved in our markets. That might turn out to be profitable. I don't suspect it will be. But who knows? You just don't know. That's the thing where hedging comes in. You're saying, look, I will sacrifice potential, some upside in order to protect some downside. And that doesn't mean it's, but you're not all or nothing. You're not all or nothing. You're saying, I'm going to take some gains off the table in order to protect some downside in case things go bad. If you don't think things go bad right now, I don't know what to tell you. If you think that's market timing, okay, that's fine. Don't market time. Don't fall any experience of 2008, of 1998. Don't fall any experience of that. That's fine. I don't know. Will that happen again? I have no idea. But how can you not see if you have the run that we've had for the last 13 years on top of the i just I, on top of just everything else i've talked about before this high energy prices comes to mind high energy prices you know there's the unemployment not in terms of not unemployment but no people are working that much all over the place it's nuts and as such there's just not i think we and i've read that I, i've meant to show you that article I don't know where the article is. I uh, I read an article about they have squeezed out, squeezed out all they can from global capital capitalism, uh, global um, capitalized capital capitalism, global capitalism. But I've said that before too, and I, I forgot where it was on Zero Hedge or something like that. I thought it was pretty interesting that they've squeezed out all they could from the uh, the, the easy profits to be made from global trade, something like that. I forgot where it was. I said, man, I think that's one hundred percent true. It's oh, that's what I'll show you. Over here. Check this out. Yeah, I remember where it was. Hold on a second. Anybody on Rumble? Right, let's see what we got. Yeah, we got some people on there now. Hey, Jeremy's here. Right on. All right. Jeremy, you're my mainstay at Rumble. Appreciate that, brother man. Appreciate that. So I'm going to show you this article because I thought it was so... Um, by the way, I haven't listened to this, but man, uh, Mark sent this to me. I have not watched this guy's channel yet or listened to it, but it seems pretty interesting. John Bachelor show. Um, the snake, uh, it's pretty interesting. Ukraine, Moscow, POV, point of view. Um, how many weapons and what kind? So I haven't listened to any of this right here. So, uh, but the, uh, the attacks on nuclear power buildings, are people still falling for this stuff? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, are people falling for that? Like, <laughs> I just don't understand why right wing people inherently think the media is not lying about this when we know they lie about everything everything that has come out of the media for basically since obama is just lies why would you think they lie now they're telling the truth now it's crazy all right i do think stagflation is my biggest concern james 100 percent. and look at those puppies oh my goodness what gorgeous dogs those are can you all see that oh, man. all right so i want to but yeah let me find this thing from uh zero hedge because this was uh they did something about morgan stanley i thought this was interesting because i had said this not too long ago i said it my very own self i said hey old josh old josh showing up again i'm not going gray oh denise no it's not going gray i mean on my side right here i've had that for a while this is yellow i got i was out in the sun so i get some yellow highlights um, plant some, uh, went to the nursery today, bought a lot of stuff to plant. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, this guy, this is my man, whoever, the, let's just watch this guy. Can I, will I get a strike? You got to watch this guy right here. Will I get a strike on this? I hope not. This is I just my man. I wanted to get your thoughts on the whole strike. Russia and Ukraine situation. You know, um, he, here's my first thought is I'm not going nowhere to fight none of these wars for these politicians. I'm saying, you know, here's my first thought is I'm not going nowhere to fight none of these wars for these politicians. I'm saying, Russia and Ukraine situation. Oh, 
There we go. Oh, so let me play it again. I had to. Uh... Right, Home, and when the war comes to Arkansas, I will dig my boots in the ground, and I will die for everything I love, and I will not retreat. If this country is invaded, and everybody's saying, "Well, we gotta, we gotta evacuate, we gotta leave," we got. I will not. I will dig my boots in the Arkansas soil, and I will fight for the people that I love, for the land that I love, and the way of life that I love. But I'm not going overseas to fight. I don't know what's going on, to be honest, brother. I really don't. There's so much stuff, and I don't think nobody knows what's going on fully. There's been so much political corruption in that area. You got Biden and his son making a shit ton of money off of uh, and using our tax dollars to bribe their people. That's treasonous, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so you got, got Hunter Biden, Biden and his son using, using our tax dollars. dollars. Hey, if, if, if Ukrainian government, if you don't do this, we're taking your tax dollars. He shouldn't be giving our tax dollars to that country anyway. Yeah. We got veterans out here sleeping on the street, and you're going to give our freaking tax dollars to the— Yeah, 100%, man. That guy that guy kicks ass. That guy for president, they can all kiss my butt on that guy. Anyway, so I want to show you guys something here, too. This is interesting. If you have it right here. Morgan Stanley says investors need to understand something about the uh, might bring. Let's see. They call the slow ballization. Slow ballization. Yep, I think that is right. Uh, and they say a potential acceleration of slow ballization. Uh, these points seem to underscore that global powers have de facto realized the limits of globalization. To put it. In investment terms, powers are acting like we're beyond the efficient frontier of the trade-off between GDP and the security. That's the message I see from Europe's embrace of tough sanction, which implicitly risks higher energy costs in return for security. The U.S. is doing the same by limiting its semiconductor exports business and potentially promoting the development of alternative global payment systems. It's all part of the slow ballization, the multipolar world policy playbooks. Uh, the, that then it was mostly U.S. led and incremental, and now it's accelerated. Yeah, I, I 100% think that's right, and um, that that would be more towards a deflation for sure. Uh, stagflation maybe, um, but deflation comes more to mind there too. The growth, the the growth, the go go growth for the last 50. I mean, really since 1950s, um, I, I just don't think are going to come back. And you know, I, I plan that in my software. I use the right capital. I say, look. You know, I use the Vanguard models at six and a half percent for stocks with an eighteen percent standard deviation. That's pretty flipping high, man. Uh, you know, fifty fifty portfolio. I think I use was that four and a half percent rate of return with a ten percent standard deviation. That's pretty low rates of return and pretty high standard deviation. So if you're coming out ahead in the right capital, you're probably going to be okay. But that doesn't mean it's hard to it's easy to go to bed at night when they're in the midst of a freaking insanity going on. So what I think. What I, again, what I'm thinking is that you look at what you had at the beginning of 2000 and at the end of 2019, and you say, and now again, if you already got four years cash and no debt, I got nothing for you, man. I mean, you just do what you got to do. Um, if you've already made it, then freaking, I mean, like I say all the time, if you already won the game, why take the risk? But I think it's more than just having money and safer stuff, Wellesley versus Wellington. I think you need to have more local stuff and banks. Yeah, I, just, I do. The local bank, man. Because you've seen what happens when the markets get shut down. You can't sell. You, like, I tried to, I, I wanted to buy 100 shares of Luke Oil today. I said, that'd be kind of fun. Because it's trading at such discounts. I can't. can't buy it. Because, you know, how dare I be a sedition uh, and buy a Russian stock? And it won't let me. And, uh, and, and now, what if I had Luke Oil and I wanted to sell it? Well, I guess I couldn't sell it either. So I'm screwed. What if I need that money to pay the rent? I'm screwed. That's not good. And you think that can't happen here? You know what Trudeau is doing, right? You, I mean, we literally we all know what Trudeau was doing just, what, two weeks ago. You think that can't happen here? You freaking done one crazy? Of course it can happen here. If anything can happen here. And so you, <laughs> I just, what has happened in these last two years has just been, it's been phenomenal. And the first year happened under Trump, just FYI. Now, I know everyone's going to gripe and say, well, Trump didn't approve it. Well, he was in charge, man. So I'm sorry to say he was in charge. He fell for the spell. Was he part of it or was he just, uh, you know, spellbound by all the negative? I don't know. Uh, I can't say he was part of it. I can't. I, I don't think he was. I think he was the uh, uh, the the fly in the ointment that they were not expecting. But they they were able to take him down because Trump likes to get his butt kissed. As such, he liked to have Fauci kiss his butt. 
And if you ever listen to Fauci interview, by the way, he's a magician when it comes to that. He always says, you know, I don't know, what's that guy? It's a gay guy, Anderson Cooper. Anderson, that's a great question. He always says his name. And he says that's a great question. And listen to Fauci. You won't hear him interviewed anymore because he's gone, but, you know, because no one wants to hear from Fauci. But, if you ever, but he's a brilliant tattis, um, tactician when it comes to kissing people's butts. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Because he says the guy's name. He says that's a great question. It's a compliment using his name. Everyone loves their name more than somebody else's. So Anderson, that's a great question. Rachel Maddow, that is a great question. Every time he does it, I cannot believe the media never caught on because they, but they won't because they love their butts kissed. Anyway, so the point being is Trump loves his butt kissed too. And I guarantee Fauci kissed Trump's butt more than probably anybody else out there. And as such, he took a prominent role. And I don't know what the hell happened to Dr. Burks. Hopefully she's digging ditches someplace. Uh, but I, oh, Finnegan, I just got a text from one of my dogs. Oh, so cute. Oh. Look at that guy. So cute. You'll shortly be seeing him and his butt, I'm sure, because he likes to show off his butt. Anyway, so the point being is it's not just having safe stuff in the uh, markets because uh, they're not liquid if they close the markets for whatever reason. And remember, from September 11th to September 17th, the markets were closed. Uh, they opened up quicker than we thought, but they were still closed. You couldn't have access to it. So how do you get the money to pay the bills, put food on the table? Where do you get that money from? And when money is scarce, guess what makes the, happens to the value of the money? It goes up. Just remember, scarcity creates inflation. And everyone thinks inflation is you know the price of goods going up. Scarcity creates inflation for cash, too, when money's hard to come by, just FYI. So what will happen here is the price, as the, the lack of liquidity potentially uh, will make your cash a heck of a lot more valuable uh, than what it is right now. So I'd definitely go to the bank. I'd be getting some cash, 100%. Doesn't make any sense not to. Get a fireproof box, get a lock, you know, put it in a safe of some sort. Go, Pablo. Oh, no. Go. <laughs> oh man! Oh, jeez, Louise! I don't. Oh my God! Maddie said that dog is pushing obese. Um. <laughs> God bless the doggies; they make you happy. All right, so now we got some cash. All right, so we went to the bank. We got some cash. I mean, I don't know how much cash you can have. I don't think you can have. Too much. What I mean by that, you don't want four hundred thousand bucks. I get you, but you know, if you had up, you know, to a couple thousand, even ten thousand bucks cash, I think that's probably a good thing. Isn't it weird too that they're uh, everyone's griping that because Putin says you can't take uh, ten thousand dollars out of the country? Uh, <laughs> again, I got this from Adam Curry's and John C. Dvorak's podcast. But uh, try going to the bank and taking ten thousand dollars out. See what happens. That's uh, because we're so free in the United States. We're so free. <laughs> so you have a number of cash. You know, you got you 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 take your gains from what you've had over the last two years, you lock them puppies in, and then you leave everything else the way it is. You take your gains. I would literally transfer that to the bank and I put it in, you know, certificates, however you want to do it at your local credit union. I, I don't care. I'm just saying, look, um, safety is a what I mean, something about the better part of valor. I don't even know what it is, but there's some kind of saying, but war is not good. Um, war is bad. You know, the uh, you look at the beginnings of the 1990 war with Iraq, and that was when everyone thought Iraq was all then a bag of chips. It turned out they weren't, but people were scared crap was. And as such, um, there was market chaos. We had it just all kinds of stuff. Now I was only 20 years old. Yeah, 20, 30. No, 20 years old, 20 years old, still in the army. So I didn't know anything, but I remember there was some serious fear on the streets. Uh, and then we blew through them and they're like, oh, OK, U.S. is great. We're not great anymore. We're just not. man. I mean, we couldn't beat Afghanistan. We you know, we who knows what the hell happened in Iraq. We're not. We don't have we, we don't have the wherewithal. We thought we did. We don't. And as such, to engage in a conflict at this stage is, is idiotic. So we're not going to do that to engage in economic war. But uh, uh, banks instead of tanks, all that's going to do is drive people away from our global economy, which is going to put a hurting on your day-to-day -day normal routine. It just is. <laughs> now, again, the, the question is, how does this end? I mean, Putin wins or he loses. Well, those two things. But, I mean, he's not going to lose. I mean, he might. Uh, he, I mean, he's not going to lose. He's going to take Ukraine, at least Kiev. He's going to get rid of Zelensky. 
And so he's going to win. What then? What then? Germany still needs his oil, his coal, and his gas. <laughs> I mean, this is insane. We are actually in talks with Maduro to get oil from them. And this is while well, Germany is shutting down the Nord Stream and we are shutting down our own pipelines. It's suicide by green fascist. It's insanity, man. It's insane. Oh, I'm going to vote harder in 2022. I mean, you should. You I mean, you should certainly vote for the Republicans. My goodness, it's not debatable. But <laughs> this is insanity. But it's not even Cold War, Jeff. Jeff says Cold War again. It's, it's worse. It's worse. Because the you know the Cold War was, we had two competing entities uh, that didn't know what each other had. And now we, we're all exposed. Uh, and the sad thing is, a lot of Americans are fat. And I don't mean, I mean, not obese, well, they are, but I don't mean like that. It's just fat and happy. It's not like it was in the 70s. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't know, we've had, you know, since 40 years of just insane growth, leisure, convenience. And I don't think people know what it, what it was like. And I was just in the 70s. I wasn't born in World War II during ration cards. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about the Great Depression. I was in the 70s. But I remember what it was like in the 70s. You know, you didn't have steak at your every convenience. You didn't. You, I, I'm, you all remember this. Now, even if you weren't on this thing right here, food stamps, you didn't just, you, you know, meat was a luxury. At least it was for me. Color TVs. No one had color TVs. I mean, if one guy did, and he was a rich kid. I mean, you didn't just. I'm telling you, you didn't. You didn't just freak. You never had DoorDash for heaven's sake. It's insane how fat we got. And again, I'm not saying obese fat. I know that's part of it, but I'm saying just fat in terms of accustomed to convenience. I I just don't think it looks good. I, you know, maybe I'm nervous. I am. Maybe I'm nervous, Nelly. Maybe I'm going gray. I don't think I'm, I'm a little bit gray up there. But you know, maybe it's a, I don't know. I'm going to look too gray. Looks like I got some sun on my face. Make my teeth look pearly yellow. All that sun I got. So anyway, I'm planting some more blueberry bushes. My whole back going to be blueberry raspberry bushes. My far back, my, my trees, which a couple I thought were dead, are coming. Oh, man, I pruned them puppies in the fall like you're supposed to. And they're already blooming, starting to bloom some. Can't wait. And I got my container garden. So I'm going to have carrots. I put some garlics in today. I put my carrot seeds in tomorrow. Put my kale seeds over here. Oh, man, lots of veggies. So I have carrots. And I probably won't do tomatoes this year. Um, I, I don't like tomatoes all that much. But I did make my homemade tomato uh, sauce the other day. That's freaking fantastic. Tomatoes are so easy. Though. I'll just buy them from the from the farmer's market because they're cheap. Um, if tomatoes aren't um, they're the most... The biggest uh, vegetable that people grow by far are tomatoes. I do like peppers. I didn't have a good pepper season last year, though. And I like cucumbers. The problem with cucumbers, they take up a lot of space, but they do give you a lot of cucumbers. I got to think about But see, I did all that before Finney. So what I'm doing is I'm planting these raspberry bushes on the perimeter because they're prickery. And I'm hoping that Finney won't uh, be able to go in my garden because uh, he can dig under my chicken wire fence. And I'm just like, oh, Finnegan. So container gardens, lots of blueberries, uh, plants, bushes, and, and uh, uh, raspberry bushes, and uh, trees back there. Fig trees, a couple of apples, a couple of pears, and peaches. And I got a big old mulberry tree. I didn't get any mulberries last year. It's crazy. So I'm thinking I will now. All right. Yeah, pe I love peppers too, Jill. Oh, man. Red peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers. Freaking, I love peppers. Oh, I can eat those all day long. I actually don't like carrots. Oh, I got tomatoes too. Yeah, so I'm putting uh, not tomatoes, potatoes. Uh, potatoes I'm putting in um, in containers there as well. So I got a lot of containers growing all along the, the perimeter of my yard. Um, and then uh, uh, I'm going to put some asparagus in. I'm hoping Finney will stay away from it because asparagus is perennial. I don't like some asparagus. My wife does. But you plant asparagus. Like last year I had I was starting to pick some up and then freaking Finnegan – Got in there. It's like, oh man, because you know, you plant asparagus, it'll, it'll repeat, man. It's this perennial, which is pretty doggone cool. I don't like it that much, but she does. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's see what we got here. So, hope that makes sense. So, I hope everybody's on on board here. Um, you know, oh, 
but I could eat some. Oh yeah. JD Preppers. Not sure what JD Preppers. Oh, JD's a person you talk to. Okay, gotcha. Rumble keeps freezing. Those they're Canadian, man. What do you expect? Of course they are. They're Canadian company. Hey, there's G Hall. Why does he keep calling me John? John, how much guys you have over here? Yeah, um, I like golden. I, you know, I, I'm not gonna tell people how much they should have on hand. I don't know. I mean, but you can, I don't know if there's an answer to that, but I'm mean, just saying not to have I, not to have cash on hand. I, I find that to be not a good move. And so how much would you have on hand? I mean, again, I, I mean, I probably wouldn't have more than 10,000 um, bucks, you know, just in case. But I don't have 10,000 bucks. I'll tell you that right now. But I think having, you know, 10,000 bucks, but you need some cash. You need some currency that you don't need to go to the bank to get. You know, obviously, get some propane. I mean, you know, get those little five-gallon ones. I mean, they cost what forty bucks. You know, spend five, spend two hundred bucks, get five of them puppies for sure. I get a dual uh, inverter. I get what three inverter back there, inverter generators. Two takes all gasoline. One takes in, uh, gasoline and uh, propane. So you want a dual fuel one too. It's just all this basic prep stuff. Make sure your car has enough gas. Don't be a quarter tank. Make sure you get invert. Let me just, I got, I'm going to go through my stuff again. Cause I, I, I don't think, let me just show you again what you need to get. Um, this is just basic, basic stuff here. Cause what we're trying to do as just in preparing prep, that doesn't mean you think the zombies are coming for heaven's sake. So what we want to do is you just want to make sure we're able to have enough food and resources to buy food. If things go bad and, and to, to talk like that doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you're freaking crazy. It just means inverter. It just means you're saying, hey, let's make sure we have our stuff in case things go south. You know, war winds are showing, man. Uh, you know, this isn't. And so, if, you know, if, if, if you're new to my channel, like, I can't believe it's talking about this. I thought it'd be financial planning. It's heritage wealth planning, building sustainable wealth, which means we sustain our wealth. So here's basic inverter generators. All right. So these, uh, uh, what's the these best deck are pretty good right here. We'll just use this one. Eh, it's not gonna give you enough. Um, so you're gonna want right here, uh, get a yeah, so, uh, let's, we'll start with this guy. I don't know, Krieger, I don't know what, what kind of brand that is, but it's got 1400 reviews, 279 bucks. So it's got 2000 watts. All right, so this guy will run your fridge easy. Now, what happens is you have you know, alligator clips or these kind of clips right here. That you it doesn't have an alligator clip on there, but anyway, so this is your what you're doing. You're converting 12 volt bat uh, volt 12 volt battery DC into 120 volt AC. That's what you're inverting. I don't know why they don't, uh, there's some called a converter, but this is an inverter. So that way you can plug your fridge right in here. And you need some alligator clips. So let's see if they show the back of it. Um, yeah, not really showing the and don't use it for your freaking coffee. Oh, it's not his coffee. Okay, good. Yeah, don't use it for your microwave. Don't use it for your toaster. For heaven's sake, man. Don't use electricity. <laughs> if you're using your inverter, for heaven's sake, you don't use it for your microwave or your toaster. You don't use it for any kind of thing that's heat-wise. That's why I have a propane tank so you can use, if you need heat to cook stuff, you use it off your propane. But not, you don't waste electricity. So I want to see if they show the back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they got these. All right. They got just little clips, not alligator clips, but they got these things that connect right there into right here. Um, and they can tighten it down and then it'll plug into, uh, um, uh, and then you plug that to the battery. I hope that makes sense. This, this is probably not the best example. It's not as visual as I'd like. Let me show you something else here. How it works. These are car inverters are right here. There's a better one. Yeah, this is perfect right here. Inverter tech. I don't know. How, this is only 500 watts. This won't run your fridge. Even if your fridge is an energy star, it's not enough. But see, so you see these battery clips right here. So those plug. Um, so this is connected. You got battery clips to connect to here, positive and negative. And then you got battery clips to connect your, your battery in your car or you're just your battery, your standby battery, however you do it. And then you, you turn that puppy on and then you run this guy. And then you turn that on and you put your, you just plug in your, your normal 120 volt appliance in here. And if, you know, again, this won't run a fridge. It's only, this only uh, 500 Watts. Um, but that'll run a lot of, that'll run a computer. That'll run your TV. 
uh, your your laptop. They'll certainly run tons of lighting. Uh, that might even run your your ice box. I think my ice box is uh, that I got Energy Star ice box. I think it's um, 300 watts or something like that. And so that that will run that for sure. Um, and so you don't need a huge generator. You just got to make sure you have enough gasoline uh, to run your vehicle. And that because that's what it's run. Your car is in is a generator. So that's what you need. Just get this thing right here. Here you go. More alligator clips. Um, and you know, if you don't have an ice box, let's, I, I, you probably don't want to get this on Amazon, but, uh, ice box, let's just see for freezer. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. That's not, I want to, uh, not for freezer ice box. Oops. Ice box. That's all I'm talking about. Hold on a second here. No, we don't call it ice box. What do they call it? A, I guess a freezer then maybe. Uh, you don't see that. Yeah, you can see that. Because I mean, so what you're doing is you're getting your food, and you're storing it. You know, and I got um, ah, the, the, we take the air out, oxygen, um, dehydrator, I, dehydrator with the uh, God, what the hell is it called, man? All right, so here's an ice box. So let's let's okay, here we go. Chest freezer. There we go. Okay, yeah, let's some watts around here. Yeah, so let, you you got the the. Well, I mean, I use a dehydrator, but what's it called? We're taking the oxygen. Anyway, who's, someone's got to know what I'm talking about. Who's, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about, man. The freaking icebox. We got we got a, a spam on here. Who's spamming me? Yeah, sardines. Can't, de, no, it's not dehumidifier. It's um vacuum sealer. That's it, boss man. Vacuum sealer. Right on. Thanks, bud. So, you know, you dehydrate stuff and you got a vacuum sealer and you, you put that, you get the air out of there, you get the oxygen removed and you put it in your freezer. Now, again, we're not trying to do this because the zombies are coming. We're just trying to prepare. Nothing wrong with that. Boy Scouts, be prepared. Um, and so the point being is when things go south, you want to have a plan of action to be prepared. A bunch of propane tanks, a bunch of uh, ways to have access to, to keep your food that you need, a ways to have access to trade if things go south. It's just basic stuff. You need some some water filters, as I talked about a couple maybe last week or something like that. You know, I want to get fluoride out of my water, so I bought a. Uh, I have to find that. I can't remember the name of the brand, and I'm waiting for that. But you know, you get some iodine tablets, those filters that you have, the life filters, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Eric. So let's see. Here we go. Here's an ice box. All right, so this is uh, looks like it's in sale. You don't want this delivered to you, though. And let's just see how many watts this guy takes uh, because you'll be surprised. What's our amps on this? Anyone see amps? So we can know that if we can find the amps. Let's just do a thing here. Oops. Nope, nothing. All right, so let's. Uh, it's 120 volts. Just give me the friggin' amps, man. Uh, geez, Louise. All right, I'm that's 249 kilowatt hours a year, but I don't want to figure that out. I just want the amps. All right, so I don't know what it is. Um, let's just go to watts then. Oh boy. Uh, you just give us amps, okay. That's not what we're shooting for. So let's go to product information. Anyone see any amps in here? Nope. No, I don't know. So I think my it takes it's 300 watts. So let's just try one other thing. Amps down here. Same thing. Oh boy. And we'll try over here. Top reviews. I, I don't know. But it, the thing is, these aren't these, these the load on these things aren't all that high. They're not, so you can get by with a. I'd be five hundred uh, uh, inverter might be okay, but you know you want a couple of inverters just to just to make sure you have one in case of. Uh, ooh, Harry says Asian markets are crashing. Yikes! Yeah. Um. Oof. Yeah. All right. So there you go. I mean, who knows? The, the, the um, last Sunday we did this, the futures were 
were getting smoked, and then the markets came back just fine, at least on that day. At least, I don't think it's 20 amps. You think, Rex? That's 2,400 watts. Ah, I don't think it's, yeah, I'd say 40, yeah, right here. I think that's more about right. Yes, yeah, let's just say five. Yeah, but six, I think boss man is right. Probably, we'll just say five amps. That's about 600 watts. I, you know, that 500 inverter is not going to be enough. I think you're right, man. Um, modern freezers will use between 30 and 100 watts of power, depending on the size. Oh. <laughs> Look, that's crazy. 30 to 100 watts for a modern freezer. I mean, how? Ins I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, right on. So. And how do we know this? How many, how many, how many, how do we know how many amps is in that? If we have 300 watts, how do we figure that out? You all know that. Well, I know you guys do because you're all electricians. But you take 120 times 2.5, that gives us 300 watts. All right. So it's, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you know, you do amps, or I should say uh, uh, amps times volts. 120 is the volts, number of amps equals the watts, and you can invert that. Um, yeah, right here. So, right on, Glenn. Glenn says three amps or so. Yeah. Yeah, right on. You got, yeah, right on. If you got your amps, you got two of the three. If you got your amps, your volts, or your watts, you can figure out the other missing component. It's basic math. Once you figure it out. So, uh, just amps, watts, volts, and you'll be able to figure out what you need. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, so Kim says, should she do Roth conversions? Well, Kim, you're single. I, I don't see any reason right now for a single person to do Roth conversions. No way. I mean, I don't want to say any reason. There's always a reason. I, but I know Kim, and I, I think I know her pretty well. I don't think doing Roth conversion makes sense right now, Kim. And the mark, when you say the markets are down so much, no, this ain't down nothing. Remember my uh, Mia, Miga, Misa Miga, whatever it is. You know, a 14% decline is average on any given year. 14% from top to bottom. I mean, what are we, let's say S&P 500 down, what, 10%? This is, this, this barely correction territory. Um, and don't forget too, if you're running your, if you're running a fridge or an ice box, put some insulation on that puppy, an insulated blanket or something like that. Just don't open it up that much. That's the thing, too. A lot of people make a mistake. I, mean, I shouldn't say a lot of people. I imagine some people could make some mistake. Hey, uh, I feel like an ice cream peach. Uh, what's down here? No, we don't do that. That's not what we do. I got four kids. Hey, uh, what's down here? Let me go through here. No, no, no. Now we're running off an inverter. You don't do that. No. And a lot of people, if you have an inverter, like I mean, literally a generator, and it's hooked up to the uh, – you know, natural gas line. Well, you're freaking, you got the gold standard right there. 100%. Absolutely. However, as a paranoid guy that I am, just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get me. I still want to make sure I have other preps and propane, uh, you know, obviously I have firewood, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff. Um, but um, and what's that thing I ordered? I want to show you something else too here. It's called, um, I'm going to find, bear with me just a second. So I ordered this thing. Uh, for a filter because I, I I really I'm despising fluoride now um, because there's no benefit whatsoever. Um, actually, there's no way to regulate, no benefit whatsoever. A fluoride on your teeth as a topical is fine, but you don't need fluoride in your water. It's nuts. It's uh, it's so freaking evil. Let me just bear me just one second. I'm gonna find out where I bought this thing from, which was uh, it was. Ooh, I forget. It's like, uh, well, I don't remember. Um, oh man, I can't remember that. All right, let me find. I know what it is. I gotta find that thing. It's a uh, uh, water filter fluoride. Right there. I'm sweating. Um, I was like, clearly, clearly water or something like that. Clearly. 
Filter. Clearly water filter, I think. Hold on a second. Yeah, there we go. All right, sweet. Yay. All right, so we're going to find it. So you guys might want to get this, too, just as an FYI. Um, yeah, I can't prove that fluoride causes Alzheimer's, um, but I, I think there might be something there that says, hey, you know, what, what's the deal with all this fluoride? We know fluoride is a rat poison, so why are we drink it in our water? Anyway, so here we go. So I bought uh, um, the Clearly Filtered, and I got uh, – oops. So you can see what happens. You dump the water in there, and then it comes down. Oops, it will happen. Man. So there it goes. All right, so the dump of the water in there, and then it doesn't come down. You dump the water in there with a dye, and it filters all that crap. So it's getting all the fluoride out of there and all that. I think it's fantastic. And then you put that in your fridge and drink away. So if you got a uh, shop, I bought filter, pitcher, and six filters. All right. And you're not going to get that in your fridge filter. The fridge filter doesn't clear out hardly crap. And I paid, you know, 345 bucks for this guy. And so you uh, only you get like 10 cups right here. Yeah, 10 cups in that guy. And you just put it in at night, put it in the fridge, and you'll have it for the next day. And then you should give yourself a, an idea to drink that whole thing. And, then, man, that, that's going to be good. That will be good for you right there for sure. And then you can get these things too. I thought it was pretty cool. Water bottles, which is pretty cool. These little water balls right there. So anyway, you just protect your water, protect your health. Water is huge, believe it or not. All right, so uh, let's see here. Um, yeah. Well, I don't. I, I tried to uh, on my survival stuff. You know, I, I'm a member of the uh, Jack Spurco MSB um, on the Survival Podcast, I, and I buy stuff from there um, as much as I can, and then I uh, I follow. You know, Bertaria app, and I buy stuff from there as much as I can local. But when it comes like an inverter and all that, in fact, Jack Spurko has his guy, uh, the Berkey guy, Jeff Gleason, the Berkey guy. Um, I just, I didn't want a Berkey. I wanted this thing for some reason. I, I, I just, this thing looked good. So I said, I'm going to get this filter um, as opposed to a Berkey. But, you know, having a Berkey on top of a, this can't hurt. I just, you know, I don't want to spend a huge amount of money. But, Anyway, so I, you know, I try to buy goods from other places, but that clearly filtered I bought from them directly. Um, I do try to, I, I buy a lot of local goods from farmers and stuff as much as I can. I need to do better. Do better, Josh. Um, I'm not on uh, Twitch. Oh, wait, he's talking to somebody else. Sorry. Uh, Costco today, I bought the two pack. Uh, yeah, right on, man. That's good. So, hey. Is that old Sealy? Is that is that Sealy? Is she back? Pablo. Here comes Pablo. You want to come up? I'm going to turn my fan on. Please. Please. Hi, Pablo. There he is. Is that Sealy? All right. So uh, uh, she got a, a Jackery, a thousand watt. I guess that's an inverter she's saying. And a 240 watt plus a solar panel. Now the, the I don't want to be negative here, but the uh, let me see if that's Sealy. Is that the Sealy? Yay! There she is. Right on. All right. Good. Good. I hope you're doing okay. Um. Yeah. I. I. If that's the same Patriot Supply, they uh, they want to advertise on my YouTube channel. I think it is. Or is that Patriot Foods? Some of those guys who advertise on. You know, Steve Dice, Dice Dice, someone like that. And I love Steve Dice, 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 whatever the hell his name is. And some of these guys, but uh, I, you know, they were, I didn't like, I didn't like their sales pitch. I didn't listen. To, I mean, they just emailed me. I never responded back. And I was like, I, I don't know. I, I didn't like it. Just kind of, kind of ticked me off. I don't like sales guys that are just like always, you know, like for instance, Dan bon, Bongino or whatever his name is, you know, he has a, uh, uh, a, a secondary for PayPal, something, you know, instead of PayPal, an alternative to PayPal. I said, I'd be interested in that. So I filled out the form and they call me back every day for like three straight weeks. I'm like, dude, I, you know, I didn't like that. I said, I, I don't want you to just send me an email, like what your pricing is. And, and if I want to, I don't know, I don't like what people, uh, oh, wow, Denise is too cool for us, I guess. Denise says, well, you enjoy the rest of the live stream. Filtration systems, amps, inverters, I don't have much to contribute, so I'm going to ring off. 
Okay, Denise, sorry to bother you. I'm just goofing you, Denise. I love Denise. She's she's all right. You know, she's from Wisconsin. We'll keep her. Um, yeah, where I was going with that. Yeah, nothing, look, I got wrong that. I mean, I got a couple solar panels, too. Just you're not going to get huge. The drawback about solar panels is the efficiency. It's just all there is to it. Um, oh, look at Harry. Just like a guy from Oklahoma can't spell by correctly. He spells B-Y. It's B-Y-E, Harry. <laughs> uh, if you were from Maine, you would have known that. You would have spelled it B-U-Y. <laughs> oh, okay, Denise. You know nothing to say to me when I said I made fun of you? What's up, man? Um, okay. Well, I guess Denise is mad because she's from Wisconsin. I don't wear my cheese head hat, which she did not sh sh uh, send me, by the way. Uh, I'm shocked that you'd be on the phone all the time. You got the gift. Oh, dude, I hate talking to people on the phone. I, I mean, literally. I mean, I I do the I talk for a living. The last thing I want to do is talk to some sales guy on the phone. Oh man. Hey, hey Michigan house. Dwayne says, show my picture. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm in rare form. What? Iowa. All right, there's Dwayne. Dwayne really won his his picture on there. Yeah, Denise is based in North Carolina. That's right. Kim's in in California. All right. There's another wish game. All right. Maryland's in the house. Carrie says no reason for oil to spike. Either someone knows that the EU is going to ban Russian barrels soon, or someone's pumping the futures contracts. I actually think this is a uh, thing that Soros is going to be freaking uh, buying up the ruble like you and believe. Well, you and I can't do it. Uh, you, we can't buy any Russian stocks. I guarantee the elites can. Dude, this is, once you, once you see it, you cannot see it. This way they do it. There's no different than knocking down the price of real estate and, and all this and making business go bankrupt so they can swoop in there and buy it up, man. It's, it's just one big globalist cabal. They keep themselves rich by manipulating everything. And, you know, that means your life is no longer yours. It's sad, but. You, know, you can fight it. You can get mad, but uh, it is. I think it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Eight percent raise is better than the rate of inflation. Uh, Illinois corruption free place, right on. Why don't people? Why don't people? I don't understand what that says. Uh, yeah, I got that CB. Right on. I'll be reading that shortly. Why? What everyone can do is go to places that are giving away free food. Don't be proud. Don't get it. Store a giveaway if you don't need to go get it. Yeah, if you don't need it. Nah, I don't like that. If you don't need it, go get it. Um, I don't know. Because, I mean, are you, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, are you taking away from other people who do need it? All right. I'm not a promote, just a way to connect. I'm missing something here. I'm not. Um, it's confirmed banks are buying in rubles, and we all know they can convert. I couldn't buy. I tried to buy some Luke oil today. It won't let me. Maybe I mean, the marks are closed, but I even put a market order for the open. I wasn't going to do it. I was going to cancel it, but I just want to see that right here. Shoot me deers and bears for food. Wood provides. Uh, yeah, what I'm saying. Um, If Harry, Harry says fat fingers. Oh, come on, Harry. We know. Yeah, right on. There you go. Yeah, right on. Yep. Uh, lights on. I got no qualms. Look, I mean, solar is, is a wonderful alternative, but it's not. Look, I got no qualm with it. Everyone thinks I'm anti solar. I'm not. I'm just realistic. Don't use solar panels, the energy, the electricity you generate from solar, to run your coffee pot. You know, don't use it to run your microwave. Anything that heats, you can't because the batteries are going to go down so fast and it's going to take a long time to replenish those batteries. But with that said, you know, if you have it, right, I mean, I got, I, look, I got a solar panel with it, a solar inverter too. It just doesn't give you much, but it's better than nothing for sure. But at the end of the day, you're like, all right, well, I mean, I'll use my LED lights to run my solar, uh, off my solar. Absolutely. 
and I'll run my fridge off my gasoline inverter um, in the generators. I have. Look, I got, I mean, I, that's, that's, that's what you'd want to do for sure. Um, because you're not going to run anything significant off solar, especially one panel. So you think about a solar panel, I would say a 300 watt solar panel. Uh, you know, I've gone through this, you know, this calculation a thousand times a Sunday and people still don't get it. In Atlanta, on average, you get 170 watts per, per basically for every, what that means is for every given moment of the day, on average, there's 170 watts coming from the sun landing right here in one square meter. But Josh, it's dark out. Yeah, because it's on average. Right. So there's nothing now, but during the middle of the day and the, in the sunny part of Atlanta with no clouds right over the head um, and sun's at 12, you're probably getting what 1100 watts, maybe 800 watts, something like that. But I think 1100 watts is the max. So you take that on average in Atlanta, you're getting 170 watts per square meter. I hope that makes sense. All right. Well, your solar panel is 300 watts. All right. Well, we know during your solar panels, I get 300 watts all day. So you can't use that. So you use 170. On top of that, your solar panel is what 25% efficient. I mean, that's that's just all there is to it. To turn the at the wattage, the energy from the uh, from the sun into actual electricity that can go to your batteries. So we know 170 watts times 0.25, you're going to get 42.5 watts on any given moment of time. So you times that by 24, and that's what you're going to get about one kilowatt right there, a thousand watts. Um, and you you know that's 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 nothing wrong with that. But that's on a meter, square meter. That's a big space. Um, you know, that's that's fine. I mean, it's better than nothing. It's free. Well, it's not really free because you got to pay for it. But at the end of the day, it is renewable. I mean, as long as the sun keeps shining, you get that. That's it takes a lot more than that though to power something that takes uh, heat. That's for sure. And so the the issue that I think a lot of ignorant people think is that the sun. Um, they, I don't. Th they just don't understand the efficiencies. They don't understand how much. Like if you're up in Maine, this is the idiocy that putting solar photovoltaic in Maine. They just don't get enough sun to make that work. It's just a stupid. Um, the better than nothing thing is nuts. I mean, just it's just dumb. It's painful. It's painfully dumb uh, to watch that. I mean, if anything, they should be. Uh, you know, they get the hydro from Quebec. Uh, you know, just use that. But. Um, and then you, then these idiots think we can have hydro. I was watching a video the other day. This guy was saying, "Oh, we can do hydro." I'm like, okay. And how do you get the water from here up? Because the thing with hydro it has to flow down. It's got to fall. It's called a head. It's got to fall. And there's certain physics they can do this mathematic mathematically to see to turn the turbine to generate electricity. Your know, water doesn't just go up on its own. So. The water flows down. You have it here. You got to put it back up. How do you do that, guy? With a solar panel? No. You're going to have to pump it somehow. And what's the horsepower you need to pump a bunch of water? Water's not that light. Water's going against gravity. All right. So how do you do that with a big fat pump, which takes a lot of electricity to pump? And where is that electricity coming from? Hey. It's in a rare form, man. Let me get it. Right there, firewood and dual fuel generator and 500 gallon tank kept fridge uh, freezers going house warm during January. Yeah, right on her, man. That's that's one of the way to go. All right. Don't you need reverse osmosis to truly clean water? Um, I don't know if you actually, I mean, I, you know, in terms of truly clean water, getting rid of the fluoride, getting, I mean, so the answer to that is no, Jill, you don't need it to truly clean water. Will reverse osmosis clean it better than these other things? I, I don't know. Maybe, but, I, you know, in terms of, can you take, you know, they got these life filters, you can literally drink from them, uh, from a freaking, uh, you know, we got a little, uh, a little creek that flows behind us, it. not big, but a little bit. So in theory, I could go down there and you know drink it without life filter. I'm not sure how long I'd want to do that for, but uh, yeah, I, yeah. Some reverse osmosis is fine um, in terms of the, the 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 room I have underneath my sink. It's not there's not enough room in there to. It's just it would be a pain in the ass. So I didn't want to. I didn't, I didn't want to mess with that. The nice thing about the clearly filter thing is that you can actually let me show you. This is pretty cool. Um, you can actually uh, let me show you a filter. And I had this; they ran out. Um, 
So if you go to shop, filter right there. So you can put this behind your fridge. That won't go in your fridge, like in the front end of the fridge, but it goes behind it. I think they got a picture of this working right there. Yeah, right, right, right. Come on here. Yeah, right here. So here's your fridge. Here's your line. You snip and put it in there. That's pretty cool. But they're out of stock. Yeah, back order till April. So I didn't order one, but I'd like to get that for sure. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, Rumble, 100%, man. Glad you guys are on Rumble. Yeah, Rumble. Um, no, that's all right. My man called me John instead of Josh. I don't get offended. Hell, people call me Scott all the time. Don't know why, but all right. That's Terry Turner. What's going on with the uh, the better half, Terry? Tina. Um, what do we got here? Cut down forest to build. Yeah, what I'm saying. I, I, it freaking pisses me off. Cut down forest to build solar farms. It's, it's, it's just evil, man. I hate it. No one was fat. If things get bad, there's not a lot of food. That's probably helped a lot of people being healthy. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree with that, but uh, I don't think there's a lot of fat. You think there's a lot of fat people back then? I can't in the thirties, for huh? He meant to say there was not a lot of fat people. I think is what he meant to say. He goes, I don't think so. Dude, I'd say 8,000 people a day want to buy 20 acres in eastern Tennessee. <laughs> you ain't the only one, man. I'd say that right now. Yeah, I tell you, I can't beat a wood stove with a big pile of wood, 100%. I, I, uh, I, I don't know if the guy's on here. they got a, a welder on here who's uh, – I told him he needs to make some gasifiers because gasifier, you can actually make electricity from wood. Uh, so, you, I mean, it's just such a, I mean, it's a, it's an old, it's an old uh, machinery, old technology, but it's freaking fantastic. Man. Just look up gasifiers. I love a gasifier. It's the coolest thing since sliced bread. Uh, let's see. The squirrels make a nice stew. Yeah, that's all you got for sure. You just got to get a little airsoft. You know what I'm saying? Um, I see that right here. Four, note right here, man. Uh, zero debt, four years cash. 100%. So if you're like that, you don't need to follow what I was saying before. I mean, no one needs to follow anything. But if you got zero debt and four years cash, I don't know what else you can do. I mean, as long as that cash, some of that cash is nearby, you know, at a local bank, you don't want it in a money market. I'm just telling you right now. I mean, look, I talk all the time, Ginny May. But if you have everything in, in securities and nothing at the bank and certainly nothing at your home, that's a mistake you're going to make, I think. And I might be wrong. I don't know. But um, that right there is where I go. Zero debt, four years cash. Sleep well at night, baby. Uh, yeah, Harry says he owns some Russian stocks. Can't sell them now. Yeah, Schwab isn't allowing any investors to buy Russian stocks. Yeah, uh, they weren't either today. Yeah. yeah, my man says, as soon as we sell our house and moved to Hastings, we'll have four years cash. Right now, right now. Awesome. See the sun shining down on me. All right, let's see what else we got here. I know I missed a lot of comments at the beginning. Um, Chef Jeff Gasifier. Oh, okay. I thought Chef Jeff is. Uh, I sell manure, great for gardens. Yeah, I, I just dumped a whole bunch of coffee. Uh, grounds, you know, use coffee grounds on my garden today. That's uh, fantastic. Getting that puppy prepped. Got my mitt lighter uh, 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 garden. You know, I use a mitt lighter synthetic fertilizers. Oh my goodness, you're using synthetic fertilizers. Actually, I do want to see my. Let's check this out. I want to. Let's go to. Uh, what we're gonna do is we are gonna. Oops, not that one. Sorry. Uh, how dare I use synthetic fertilizers? No. We're going to go to, let's see, Home Depot. There we go. I see the sun shining down. 
Yes, I saw that too, Cab Ragoon, Cabulous. Uh, major European and U.S. nation pensions are invested in Russia. I saw that too. I said, ooh, some pains coming back. 100%, man. I, uh, like, who is the Kentucky teachers or something like that? So I had a huge invest in Russia. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever? Yeah, I, I ugh. Ugh. Have you ever seen the rain? I love CCR. CCR is fantastic. They not, I heard there's a big Fogarty and the rest of the boys don't like each other. That's my understanding. All right, so let's go to Home Depot, and we are going to see what 101010, or if they even offer 131313, is doing right now. All right, so let's go to what the pricing is. Come on, work for me, baby. Let's see what the what the pricing is. They got all right, we want a bag of right here. Forty pound bag of ten 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 is how much? I wonder if they're gonna show me on the website. I'm predicting they don't. Twenty two bucks. All right, so I'm not sure how how what was that? Twenty two bucks. Um It doesn't seem that bad. I'm not sure what it was. I wonder what it was last year. Did they even offer 13, 13, 13? 13. They used to. I know that for a fact. I used to have some. Blink. Hey, they do got 13, 13. Holy crap, man. They give me some of that. Hype, hype Pond X. 13, 13, 13. Ooh, I thought 25 bucks. There you go. All right, sweet. That's already there. All right. Good. All right. So they even they no way they got 16, 16. Hold on just a second, guys. I'm just interested. 16, 16, 16. Okay. Oh. Uh, all right. Yeah, I think they made that. Yeah. Someone asked me if I use Melorganite. Um it basically uh, uh, it's, uh Nitrogen is poop. You know what I'm saying? It's from uh, septic, septic tanks. Um, you know, from the it's raw sewage essentially. Um, I I used to do that when I when I put uh, my care. I, I don't do anything on my lawn. I, when I used to be all into my lawn, you know, I always let it grow longer. You know, it's stupid to mow it low. I mean, it just takes more water and stuff. Um, so you let it grow longer. Put some melorganite in there. Uh, I used to do something else once or twice a year too. I never did weed and feed. I don't do that. Uh, but malorganite, because that's just it's, it's sewage essentially. And I did something Morgan, and then something else too. It seems like I did on occasion. I forgot what it was. Uh, but I don't, I don't do anything anymore. I just I don't. You know, the lawn is the lawn. Um, you know, the lawn is just an overgrown <laughs> weed. Um, I don't use that in my garden. Um, that's for sure. Ten, 13, 13, 13 plus some uh, borax. Plus some, I think it was lime. I can't remember the ingredients. Borax. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You guys are probably bored of this. Yeah, I don't care. Um, mitt lighter. Mitt lighter. Oh, right here. I can't remember what else. So basically, I have I have you know a couple five gallon buckets. I keep my 10, 10, 10. Or 13, 13, 13, I should say. Um, all right, let's go to here. Now, this is where you want to buy all your stuff from True Leaf Market, by the way. Um, True Leaf Market is a legit uh, good company out there in Utah, if memory serves. Uh, I just can't remember what this is. So they got uh, right here, 13, 13, 13, right here. So we got to add, yeah, right here, Epsom salt. Uh, should be some borax you got in here. Um, uh, just mix according to instructions, readily available. 60 pounds of powerful weekly feed mix, one 10 ounce package of micronutrients with four pounds of Epsom salt. 
25 pounds of this. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Um, and so you got to go get your own. Th- See, so you don't even have 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 is not enough. You need 13, 13, 13. There used to be 16, 16, 16. You don't get that anymore. So I actually go load up some 13, 13, 13 tomorrow. And I got like, you know, these five uh, gallon buckets and just dump them in there. And I got 10 of these guys ready to go. So I have one for each year. So I'm good there. Um, which is good because this is what plants need. Plants need the proper nutrients. And with Doc and Mitlider, uh, we've been able to identify what the proper nutrients are. And then you need your, your pre-plant. That's, so that's your weekly feed. And then we need our pre-plant. Um, pre-plant. Oh, they got that here. No, they don't have that. So Mitlider, Mitlider pre-plant mix right here. On the Mitlider pre-plant mix. And so under my... Uh, um, my deck, I got a couple um, uh, buckets of the pre-plant and the mint lighter weekly gardening thing. Uh, right, not water. water. Uh, yeah, pre-plant right here. I can't remember what it was. I got all his stuff. So I'm a big fan of the mint lighter gardening method. I, it just is fantastic. I love it. Um, and you should too. All right. Well, thanks, Rex, for... For my military service appreciate that um uh, thanks for paying for my college uh yeah well i agree with this one i'm saying i mean why would you want an expat i mean where would you go it's better than the united states i don't get it i went down virginia seeking shelter from the storm something 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 trying to stay warm but the best song is uh put a candle in the window you know that song oh that song's fantastic then lodi uh lodi is by far and away the best song uh, just oh man how that and he goes i can't think off the top of my head lodi um I went, you know, uh, the man from the magazine Said I was on my way somewhere where I lost connection. When I went down to Avery, Arizona, I went no way. I was down. I was down. I was born no, I not born to bite. I was uh when I was a little bit of baby, my mama used to rock me in the cradle, sing at home. Cotton fields back home is down in Louisiana, just about a mile from Texarkana. How can Louisiana be a mile from Texarkana? It's down in Louisiana, just about a mile from Texarkana. I don't think Louisiana and Texarkana. Texarkana is near Texas, Arkansas. I don't think Louisiana bumps up that. Was it? Ah, come on, CCR. It's kind of like that one song by. Uh, uh, the guy um, up in West Virginia who's doing moonshine, uh, Steve Earl, you know what I'm saying? He's like, his dad got like 100 pounds of yeast to, to run some moonshine. <laughs> it's like, damn, whoo, that's a lot of yeast. Uh, he's, he's he's not using all that to run moonshine, I'll tell you that right now. Um, but it rhymes, I get it. Water of Life, is that, I have not read Water of Life. Is that this book right here? What is this book right here? I got cancer in the new biology of water why the war on cancer has failed yeah, interesting yeah right on when you move to maine you have to worry about keeping the food cold that's right ken tons of rain light yeah you gotta have a south-facing house that's for sure brad south-facing what i'm saying it was down in Louisiana, Jeff, 100%. U.S. taxpayers are going to bail out state pensions because a U.S. taxpayer has unlimited funds. We get all this extra funds just sitting there, sitting there. Like the U.S. is four years of cash just sitting there. It's uh, nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium is what NPK means, if memory serves. Nitrogen, phosphate, potassium. And then you have to have other, those are the big elements in um, uh, the nutrients that plants want. But you have to, have, there's more than just that. I mean, it needs calcium, it needs 
I just, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it needs all kinds of different nutrients and certain combined. It's kind of like, you know, you don't, we don't have enough vitamin D, right? So because we don't have enough vitamin D, our immune systems are hurting, but just because you had a bunch of vitamin D doesn't mean crap. You have to have other stuff too. Like you might not have enough zinc. So you go out to buy a bunch of zinc tablets, you throw them in there. That's not going to work because it doesn't actually get absorbed in your cells. So you need quercetin. I mean, all this stuff, they kind of flow together. Um, so all nitrogen does is make the grass green. You know, it greens up things. It's great. Nothing, I mean, your plants need it. Don't get me wrong. It needs CO2 for heaven's sake. But it needs other things in proportion to the MPK, um, 10, 10, 10, 13, 13, 13 and stuff. The issue is that because of supposedly Timothy McVeigh using a fertilizer to blow up uh, Oklahoma City, um, <laughs> they want to ban it because uh, I, I know, they've been basically banning any kind of major – uh npk so now it's basically it's hard to even get 13 13 13 anymore stupid and you just gotta wonder uh, who else was involved with old timothy mcveigh huh. wonder who else could have been involved huh let's see the same people involved who took out randy weaver and david koresh could they have been involved and in just blaming on this guy this you know white nationalist hmm could they have been involved in some of these muslim terrorist plots Hmm. Well, the answer is yes, they could have. And the answer is yes, they probably were. I'm not saying anything. Lots of evidence that says not only were they heavily involved in the Michigan corruption or the uh, the, the Michigan thing where they're going to take out the governor, uh, they were the only people involved. But just basically two innocent bystanders like, all right, I guess I'll do it too. You got lots of evidence that they helped the uh, guy, the Muslim terrorist in Texas who killed those cops. They actually drove him to the thing. Uh, we there's more evidence about the guy in Florida too. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just the, the the world isn't what you what we think it is, and it's uh it's it took me until 2020 to realize that. Now I was always I wouldn't say I was anti-vax. I mean I just said look I think people can do whatever the hell they want. But you know after I'd done some research starting in 2015 about vaccines, said this ain't all it's cracked up to be, man. You know what I'm saying? And yet, if you said anything, people went freaking crazy. Now, I'm gladly sound anti-vax. I got no qualm saying that at all. After what happened this last two years, if you're still like, vaxes are always good, you're freaking nuts. You're just nuts. And a lot of right-wingers are, because this is where right-wingers say, we believe the science. We don't want to be like Jenny McCarthy. And the same thing with right-wingers. We hate Putin. We want to be on the side of George Soros. You guys are being played. It's 100%. Doesn't mean I'm right on this, but the idea that vaxes are, are good just because it has the word vaccine and they're just freaking stupid. It's just a lack of curiosity, a lack of just intelligent debate on that. And unfortunately, right wingers fall for the same stuff as left wingers. I mean, left wingers think it's climate change. Uh, that's just idiotic. Uh, what else they think? There's some uh, socialism. I mean, socialism can't work. It's idiotic. You know what I'm saying? I mean, left. I always saw this, Rush Limbaugh say this too. Like, wait, how are. <laughs> How are rich people getting rich off the backs of the poor? The poor have no money. So, <laughs> so rich are stealing from the poor to get rich. That doesn't make any sense. It's just stupid. Um, and there's all, just all kinds of things. Like we just can study just. Uh, dumb. I mean, the, the left is just as, I mean, the right is better, but the left is, is, is stupid. The right is less stupid, but the right has a lot of its own pack. It, Bill Buckley was not the savior that a lot of us thought he was. He just wasn't, man. I know a lot of people think Bill Buckley's all down a bag of chips. Nope. But, you know, look at George Will. A lot of right wingers love George Will until Trump. Now we realize George George Will is a freaking fake. Well, if he was a fake because of Trump, what else could have been faking about him? Bill Buckley, he was obviously died before Trump came along. The same thing. I mean, just the, the right-wing heroes, turns out they were wrong. Uh, give me Joe McCarthy any day of the week over some of these clowns. You know what I'm saying? Give me uh, uh, the freaking socialism from the 1918s who got sent to jail. Oh, man, uh, Debs, Eugene Debs. Give me that guy any day of the week over some of these right-wingers. I'll take Eugene Debs any day of the week. If I had a draft, I had Joe McCarthy, Eugene Debs, Bill Buckley and I don't know, George Will or some other prominent conservative, I'd take these two guys first and foremost, Eugene Debs and Joe McCarthy. They could be my number one and two uh, starters. And I'll put Bill Buckley on the other team and I don't know, freaking 
George Will, who's another clown. There's so many right wing clowns out there. David Frum, David French, anyone who writes for National Review, um, and we'll smoke them because our side is better. It's just all there is to it. Their side's worse. Our side's better. Doesn't mean our side's perfect. It's not. You know what I'm saying? But um, at the end of the day, it takes uh, some some curiosity and some thinking, and free thinking too, to say, you know, all that crap you've been feeding me about the the food pyramid, about the vaxes, about the safety of pasteurized milk, about uh, I mean, just all this crap you've been feeding me, it's all just fake. It's all bad. Um, about climate change, you know, I mean, just it's all, it's all fake, all fake. And it's just a sad, man, about, oh, if we don't get them over there, they're going to get us over here. I had a guy on my YouTube channel, I couldn't believe it, posted a comment and said, I said, yeah, it's funny how we're so mad at Ukraine um, or Putin all the while. At the same time, the same sentence that we're chastising Putin. We are right now bombing Syria and Somalia. Some guy, I couldn't believe he said this. He goes, yeah, well, it's better kill those terrorists so they don't kill innocent women and children first. And I, I just, my jaw dropped the floor. I said, <laughs> and he's a right-wing guy. I was like, I, I literally can't, I can't fathom that level of stupidity. I just can't. I know it pisses a lot of people off. Like, oh, man, you sound like a Democrat. You're auditioning for CNN. You know, so. At the level of stupidity, we better kill them over there or else they're going to kill more innocent women and children. I, I just, I cannot believe people don't see the the fallacy in that idiotic statement. I'm like, okay. And at that point, you're just like, okay, whatever. You're going to have to come. You're going to figure it out yourself. I, I was there. I was there. The U.S. is the good guys. We, we the people in the country, is the good guys, are the good guys. The government is not. It's not the good guys. I'm sorry. And it's not the good guys regardless of who's in president. Yes, Trump was freaking awesome. The best president in my lifetime, bar none. Better than Reagan. Bar none. Wasn't close. But he did not control the government. The government controlled him. Now, he put a freaking – he grounded down a little bit, which is fantastic. And if another four years – I don't know. I don't know what Trump would have done in another four years, frankly. I don't know. We'll never find out. And, and in a way, I think that might be good. Because in some ways, I'm like, oh, if you only had four more, we could have done good, better. Th-. And I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Because um, Trump's a liberal by heart. We know that. And, and I, whatever. Man. But at the end of the day, I sit there, I think, man, eesh. It's frustrating because you know that he, he has some good ideas that if he could have implemented them. But, you know, policy, personnel is policy, man. And he had Sessions. Sessions was a big letdown. That's, that Sessions, that was, I don't, even, I don't blame Trump for that. I blame it's like John Roberts. They got John Roberts with his adoptive stuff. Um, and, uh, and now they got him by the kahunas. And some, they had sessions. They got sessions somehow. I'm not sure how. But they got Roberts. They got sessions. And that was just disappointing. Um, but, you know, he did have Paul Manafort. And that guy's a clown. He, I mean, he should be. I, mean, I don't know. If, I hope he's in jail. He should be because he's knee deep in the Ukraine rape, too. Crazy. Um, and then they had um, who else he had? Uh, a bunch of – oh, then the other guy from the big pharma in charge of HHS. You're like, what the hell, Trumpster? I thought we were going to be you know, looking into this crap. Nope. And then he had Burks and he had Fauci. And it, but he didn't have them. He had Pence who had them. That was Pence. I just – these guys – you know, Rush Limbaugh said in 1994, I'll never forget, when the Republicans took over the House and the Senate, he said, look, man, you guys are going to get to D.C. Cokie Roberts is going to bat her eyes like this. And she's going to make you feel good and make you feel like she cares what you have to say. And you're going to sell your soul. And uh, look at John Kasich. Look at Joe Scarborough. Look at all these. Lindsey Graham. Look at all these guys. I think Graham came in in 1992. It was the same thing. It's the same damn thing. They sold their soul for rock and roll. Um, Very, very few. Tom Massey and Rand Paul, about the only two that actually stay true. Um, Chip Roy seems like he's pretty good. Crenshaw's a clown. Don't just because Crenshaw lost an eye overseas. Don't don't be fall. Don't fall for his aura. He's a clown. Um, I just there's very. I like Ron John. I donated some money to Ron Johnson. By the way, I want justice when it comes to the fact stuff. And the only guy who's going to do it is Ron Johnson. He's had and he's from Wisconsin. He isn't from freaking Texas. He's from Wisconsin. He had the guts to stand against the Nazis that were putting this crap and forcing us to take this crap, forcing masks on kids. And he'll be in charge. If he, if the, he wins re-election, the Republicans take back the Senate, he will be in charge of researching. And the, I don't think he'll be the head of the Judiciary Committee, but he'll be in charge of the 
uh, the the subcommittee that's in charge of this, and I want I want freaking heads to roll, man. I want vengeance. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, if you read the stuff of stuff I read about these people being maimed and hurt, and they never should have had to do this, it'll piss you off. And you want people, you want people to pay. I want people in jail, Nuremberg trial, one hundred percent. And uh, so I donated some money to Ron Johnson. If you would, you know, Pat Toomey was a big letdown, big letdown. Jeff Flake, big letdown. Jeff Flake was head of the Goldwater Institute in Arizona. And when I was in Arizona, Goldwater Institute was a right-leaning libertarian, libertarian right uh, uh, think tank. I said, perfect. You know what I'm saying? Believe in praise, basically not quite the same extent I did, but legalization of drugs. Uh, believed in you know small business, Main Street over Wall Street, what, 100%. Believed in school choice. Uh, believe in you know less barriers to entry for entrepreneurs. And then Jeff Flake is in D.C. And he's like, what the hell? He's like, John McCain's you know, you know what? And I was like, what happened? And then Pat Toomey, man, I mean, same thing. He was part of a, a right wing think tank, too. And you're like, all right, Pat Toomey's going to get in their bus heads. It turns out, no. And that just I showed you the Heritage found and Heritage is probably pretty good. But, you know, some of these guys, they're just part of these think tanks and they're just as big. Class. I mean, they're just D.C. state swamp things, too. It's crazy. I can't believe Pat Toomey. I said, Toomey. I said, well, Jeff Flake was first and Toomey comes to be a big squish. I was like, what the hell? Just lying sacks of crap. So freaking frustrating. That's why you can't put any hope in these guys. Because look at Marco Rubio. You know, he took out Charlie Chris in the Nova, in the uh, primary in uh, Florida in 2010 for Senate. And Chris was like a Republican. You know, he seemed pretty Republican. He's a governor of Florida for heaven's sake. He's running for Senate. You're like, all right, Chris. I mean, he was the, he was the uh, establishment. But Rubio, young, you know, good-looking guy, speaks Spanish and Florida. Like, yeah, all right. He came out from out of nowhere. You're like, all right, good. Rubio's a man. 2016, a lot of freaking what we thought were conservatives. Like, Rubio, he's got it. And then Rubio goes on some of these shows like, we got to have amnesty. You're like, what the hell? What what happened? Hey, Baba. DC gets their mitts into him, man. I mean, think about it. To go into politics, you need your ego massage. You go into politics because you want to be big. I mean, you're desperate somehow to be a big kid on the block, big man on campus. You want people to kiss your ass. And <laughs> collateral is you can make a hell of a lot of money going to politics. How did Harry Reid get so rich? A senator. Uh, you know, freaking Trent Lott. Uh, freaking Biden. How do these guys get rich, man? I mean, give me a freaking. So damn corrupt. All right. Uh, all right. Just about a year ago, I sent Rothy. Just about a year ago, I set out on the road seeking my fame and fortune, looking for the pot of gold. Oh, Lord, stuck in Lola again. Did my financial price prices go up this year? No, they didn't. No inflation here, Ken. ships all right 157 all right how about all right, i think i get out of here man I'm, I'm getting tired now um them bones them bones them broken bones them bones them all right so again if you uh what's up doc you're going downstairs all right cool all right so just remember my friends um tomorrow is never too early to start looking at getting some cat literally cash cash in your house in your hand for sure take if you don't have four years if you got some debt you don't have four years of cash look at what you started with in 2020 and look where you are now in my opinion would be to take the gains and lock them into a local bank inside an ira is fine without question that means it doesn't have to be taxable or penalized you can move it inside an ira to ira that's fine but I think it's important to think about doing that. To actually, I think it's important to do that simply because this stuff that's going along is, is I don't know what the end is, but it's, I mean, <laughs> if I'm wrong, okay. Well, you have cash that's not doing much for you. Well, you still have the bulk of your money that could be doing, that is doing something for you. I mean, I, I, okay, so that sucks. You know, you're, you're, you missed out on some games. Wow, that sucks. I'm so upset. If I'm right, or even if I'm halfway right, I mean, it's just it's just going to make it a little bit more calming. 
I don't believe all or nothing anything. So I'm not saying do all into that because that wouldn't make sense. Because if I am wrong, then you're screwed. If I'm not wrong, then you you won. But it's like don't be gambling with your money. This isn't a gamble. This is a you're not all or nothing's dumb. You're saying to yourself at the end of the day, it makes sense for what's going on to be more protective right now. That doesn't mean you're getting out. That doesn't mean you're freaking digging a bunker. That doesn't mean you think the zombies are coming. You're saying war drums beaten is always a bad sign. And uh, let's 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 lock in some of those games. That's what I suggest you. Love to hear your thoughts. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. More videos will be coming, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. It'll be an interesting week. Just hang tight. All right. God bless. Thanks now.